Now that we've discussed the fundamentals of marksmanship and the correct positions to shoot from, we're going to talk a little bit about ballistics and zeroing. Okay, the first thing we're going to discuss is ballistics. All right, everything that happens to the projectile from the time the primer is struck by the firing pin until the, the projectile comes to a complete stop is ballistics. All right, we break this down into three basic phases, internal, external, and terminal. Of the three phases of ballistics, we're only going to talk about the external. The external phase of ballistics is everything that happens to the bullet from the time it leaves the muzzle of the rifle until the time it strikes its first target downrange. All right, a bullet flying through the air is acted upon primarily by two forces that change the direction and the velocity of its motion. All right, these two forces are gravity, which causes the bullet to start to fall towards the earth immediately upon leaving the muzzle, and then air resistance, which causes the bullet to slow down and fly erratically once it becomes unstable. We counter these two forces in three basic manners. We increase the angle of departure of the bullet, all right, which counters the effect of gravity, allowing our bullet to fly farther before it hits the ground. All right, we impart a high rate of spin on that bullet, which keeps it stable. And then, again, we fire the bullet at a very high velocity, all right, which counters, again, um, air resistance, allowing our bullet to fly farther and keeping it in a nose forward manner for it to be stable while it flies downrange. All right. We have two basic concepts that we talk about that will help you visualize how a bullet uh, flies through the air All right, when leaving the rifle barrel. You have the flight of a football and a child's top. All right, as you know, if you're going to throw a football on a very short pass, you can pretty much throw it directly to the person you're throwing it to um, for over a short distance. If you have to throw it farther down range, you have to increase the angle of departure, lofting the, the football higher in the air, allowing it to fly farther before it falls. All right, and then you have a child's top. As you know, if you set a top on a table and spin it very quickly, it stays stable for a very long time. If you bump that top while it's spinning at a high rate of speed, it rights itself and stays pretty stable. All right, once that top starts to slow its rotations down, it becomes very unstable and eventually will just fall over. All right, a bullet does the exact same thing. We spin that bullet with a high rate of speed, keeping it pointed you know, nose forward going down range, until it slows down enough to where it becomes erratic. All right, so now we discuss um, line of sight. All right, what a shooter sees behind the sights uh, can be illustrated by drawing a straight line from the rear sight to the front sight to the target. All right, this is nothing more than your line of sight, what you're going to see through the sights. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the line of bore. All right, this is an imaginary line drawn from the center of the bore all the way straight to the target. All right, if the bullet wasn't affected by gravity or air resistance, this would be the path of the bullet straight to the target if it were a laser or you're shooting a vacuum. All right, and next we have the path of the bullet. All right, trajectory is the path the bullet will take when fired from the barrel. All right, as you can see here, with the line of sight and the line of bore are parallel, the trajectory of that bullet will fall short of the target if you do not increase the angle of departure. All right, so as you can see in this illustration, the bullet starts to fall towards the earth immediately upon leaving the muzzle. Okay, again, this is what happens when the bullet leaves the muzzle when the barrel and the line of sight are parallel to the ground. It begins to fall as soon as it comes out of the muzzle. All right, so now that we have these three parts of trajectory, what has to change in order for us to be able to engage this target at 300 meters? All right, we have to increase the angle of departure. All right, raising the muzzle will increase the angle of departure, allowing the bullet to impact farther down range. All right, if you raise the muzzle without moving the sights, it'll be very hard for you to see through the sights and still look at the target, see the target through the sights. All right, therefore, in order for us to be able to aim at the target and hit our target, we have to zero the sights to where the line of bore and the path of the bullet intersect Therefore, to be able to aim at the target, the sights must be adjusted so the rifle will be, the muzzle will be elevated and the line of sight will still be on the target. The distance the muzzle is raised by moving the sights may not be noticeable to the naked eye, um, even, but even at 25 meters, the muzzle will be elevated slightly. This is a very drastic example of what it looks like uh, from the side. As you can see here, the angle of departure is increased allowing the path of our bullet to cross our line of sight 
at 25 and 300 meters. All right, with the M16, M4 family of rifles, it just so happens that uh, the path of that bullet crosses the line of sight twice, um, being at 25 meters and at 300 meters. This is what allows us to get a 25 meter zero and it consequently being a 300 meter zero as well. At about 100, between 150 and 180 meters is the highest part of the trajectory of that round. It's normally about seven to 10 inches above the line of sight at that 150 to 180 meter mark. All right, so therefore when you're shooting at targets at that mid range, it's, it's helpful to aim just a little bit low on that target. All right, so what is zeroing? All right, the average answer is nothing more than adjusting the sights so of the bullets impact where you're aiming. All right, FM 3-22.9 states the purpose of a battle sight zero is to align the sights with the weapons barrel given standard issue ammunition. All right, both answers are correct. Uh, we're gonna discuss each of those a little bit. Okay, so here, before we zero the rifle, we have some pre-range departure and, and post-weapon draw checks that we need to look for. All right, if you've never fired the rifle that you're drawing out uh, to go out and zero, you're gonna wanna check the front sight post to make sure that it's not damaged, being bent, or if somebody's grabbed, a pair, grabbed it with a pair of pliers and tried to turn it without pushing down the detent, um, that's damaged that front sight post, it's gonna make it very hard for you to zero that rifle. So make sure the front sight post is not bent, Make sure the base of the front sight post is flush with the front sight housing itself. Okay, again, now we're gonna move back to the rear, uh, rear sight. Make sure that the rear sight aperture, the small aperture is up. Make sure it's centered in the rear sight uh, housing itself and make sure it moves freely and it's clean, not dirty or have anything caked in there or it's been dropped. Once we've ensured that the front sight post is not damaged and that the rear sight moves freely through its entire range of travel and is centered up, uh, we need to check and make sure the elevation wheel is in the correct position. All right, to zero at 25 meters, we need to ensure that the elevation wheel is set at eight slash three, and the, there's no gap between the rear sight itself and the charging or the carrying handle. All right, for the M16 A2 rifle, we all know that the, you need to zero it at 25 meters at eight slash three plus one. For the M4s, you need to leave it on, so it would be six slash three for that carrying handle. All right, on the backup iron sight, all right, make sure that the armor mounted the backup iron sight in the very last slot on the upper receiver. It needs to be in this slot in order for the sight system work to work correctly. All right, for zeroing, the backup iron sight on an M4, it needs to be on the 300 notch. So you'll move your elevation to the 300 line. All right, for zeroing the backup iron sight on an A4, you need to put it on the little white line in between the 300 and the 400 yard settings. All right, so the Army has developed two methods for engaging targets based on the following two scenarios. You have your unknown distance, which is your battle sight zero, on your iron sights, your M68, your EOTEX, and so on. And then you have your known distance, which is called bullet drop compensating, all right? Your iron sights can also be used as a, um, as a bullet drop compensator. Your ACOG, your LCAN, your Mark IV scopes all have ranging reticles built in, which allows you to compensate for the drop of that bullet. All right, to achieve a battle sight zero, all right, if you're able to, you can use a bore laser to basically get the sights lined up so they're on paper at 25 meters. This keeps you from going out to the 25 meter range, firing your first group, and not being on paper. All right, once you get to the 25 meter zero range, all right, you have to zero that rifle at 25 meters, meaning you manipulate your sights to where your point of aim is center mass on the target, your groups are coming up center in the, in the silhouette. All right, next you need to confirm and refine your zero at actual distance, meaning at 300 meters. A 25 meter zero is good to have on the rifle, but as you'll see, when you move to the 300 meter range, that zero could be off by several inches one way or the other and you couldn't tell at 25 meters. All right, if possible, you need to engage targets from 100 to 300 meters to ensure that that zero is good, to make sure nothing crazy is going on, you're not out the left or out the right or too high or too low. If you shoot targets at each known distance from 100 to 300 meters, you can ensure that your zero is solid and you won't have any trouble with it. Okay, this is how a battle site zero works. 
Right, a battle sight zero allows you to aim center mass on your target and achieve a hit from zero to 300 meters. All right, as you can see, the first place the bullet crosses our line of sight begins at 25 meters. It'll be point of aim, point of impact. Again, around that 180 meter mark is where the bullet's at its highest point in trajectory, and it's gonna be about seven to 10 inches higher than your point of aim on that target. And then that bullet's gonna come back down and cross your line of sight again at 300 meters, letting you achieve a point of aim, point of impact hit on that target. All right, at 300 meters, Again, your point of aim, point of impact. At 350 meters, you're gonna be about eight to 10 inches lower than your point of aim. And then at 400 meters, you're gonna be a full 15 inches or so lower than your point of aim. You can still achieve a hit without manipulating the sights at all, but it's gonna be lower out there at 400 meters. All right, this is just a representation of how that bullet flies through the air and where it will impact those targets at each distance. Okay. Now we have two basic sight pictures. One, the picture on the left, the front sight post is centered on the entire target, including the head. All right, this is what most people see as center mass. The other thing that people see as center mass or call center mass is, the, is holding center mass of the body of the target, not including the head. All right, either one of these is correct. They're both center mass. All right, the important part of holding a good center mass hold is to ensure you do it the exact same way every single time. Um, I personally prefer center mass not including the head. It's the biggest part of the body. At 300 meters, a lot of times the head of the target can get kind of um, distorted. You can't really tell, but you can always see the bulk of the body. So aiming centered of that bulky body uh, allows me to hold center mass very consistently from shot to shot. Again, the most important thing you can do is be consistent with either hold that you use. This is going to allow your zero to stay the same from time to time on the, on the rifle range, from shot to shot. All right, so make sure you're holding the exact same hold each shot. All right, so when zeroing at 25 meters, um, we emphasize shooting five shot groups and zeroing low in the four centimeter circle on the center of the target. All right. What this does, uh, zeroing low in that circle, ensures that on those mid-range targets from 150 out to 200 meters, that the shooter's not gonna shoot over the shoulders of the target. Those are the, most, the targets most commonly missed on the pop-up qualification range. So by zeroing a little bit low in the four centimeter circle, you're still achieving a, a good solid zero on the rifle, and it's gonna keep your point of impact at the mid-range targets in the high chest, not over the shoulders. Okay, so now we know how to zero the rifle at 25 meters. We know where we should be zeroing it at to achieve hits from zero all the way up to 300 meters. Um, we're gonna talk about a term that we use when manipulating sights called minute of angle and why it's important to the shooter. All right, minute of angle is nothing more than a unit of measure used by all weapon systems uh, which make our windage and elevation adjustments. Uh, as you adjust those sights, each click is worth a certain portion of a minute of angle. All right. All adjustments will be converted from inches um, on the target to minutes of angle on the sights. That's why it's so important for you to understand what a minute of angle is. All right, so what is that minute of angle? It's an angular unit of measure um, in a fraction of a degree. One minute of angle is nothing more than one sixtieth of one degree. All right, so you have 360 degrees in a circle. One sixtieth of one degree is one minute of angle. And the way this works, as far as pertaining to a shooter, is one minute of angle equals one inch per 100 meters. So one minute of angle equals one inch at 100 yards or meters, two inches at 200, three inches at 300, so forth and so on, all the way to 10 inches at 1,000. All of those measurements are still one minute of angle. All right. Each click on your sight system either moves a half minute of angle or a full minute of angle, depending on which, which direction you're moving in. Right, we're gonna go through that a little bit later on and tell you what each click on each sighting system moves.